Hello fellow gamers, and welcome to our third installment of God of War 4 The New Way series. After disembarking from this boat, we're going to be thrust into a small story related cutscene which I'm going to skip. After we get back out of the door, we're going to come down these stairs to collect the first collectible of the video. Alright, so continuing on to the end of the Realm Tower line, we're going to get another room full of Draugr. And then just over here in the background is going to be the second Jotnar Shrine. Continuing on with the level, we're going to meet a room with a Tetzel Worm in it. And then just behind it is going to be a legendary chest with a Muswellheim Realm Cipher in it. Alright, now cutting to the next part of the game, we're going to get an entire room full of Draugr, which we're going to kill again. And right here, I'm going to be opening up a Nornir chest. Alright, so I'm going to run back down, and then turn it one more time. And then running back up, I'm just going to hit that one at the top one more time as well, and that should open the chest. Alright, our next stop is going to be just a little bit further up the mountain. We're going to meet an entire room full of Draugr, again. So I'm going to freeze these wolves in place using Eveldry's Anvil, and then I'm just going to hit them with the Axe Cleave. So after clearing out this room full of collectibles, I'm just going to hit this with the Frost Axe, which is going to blow up this pile of rocks. Then just over here is going to be another one. And as we can see, if I just freeze this poison maker over here, there is another red barrel just behind it. So freezing the second one here will allow us to access this legendary chest, which makes two out of eight on this journey. Then if we come over to this door, we'll start the next battle of the game, which is going to be the first in our difficult battle guide. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is just focus entirely on this ogre. Just unload everything that you've got, and then as soon as it starts retaliating, go into Spartan Rage mode and just beat it down until it gets into Stagger mode. Alright, now jump on its back. Now we're going to lure it into all the standing red barrels, while also just hitting all the smaller Draugr along the way. So there's the first one, second one, now we should have to jump off it. Now start attacking it again. Jump back on top of it. And now just start killing all the smaller Draugr while also killing the Ogre. Alright, now that it's dead, it's going to drop the first Frozen Flame of the game, which we are going to need later on to level up the Frost Axe. Okay, this completely concludes all the collectibles on the way up the mountain. So now I'm just going to skip to the next part, right after we meet the Black Breath. Now I'm going to show you a cool trick which you can do in this game. I'm going to throw away the Frost Axe, just here in Midgard. Then I'm going to slowly make my way down the mountain. It's a very long and grinding section, so again, I'm just going to skip right to the end of it when we get to Alfheim. As you can see, we've still not got the Frost Axe on our back. This is as far as we can go without the Frost Axe, so let's just call it back. And as we can see, it teleports straight from Midgard to Alfheim without the need for any sort of realm tower. Okay, if we just continue down this bridge, just up there on the wall, in that little circle, is going to be the first lore marker of the video. Okay, then if we continue down the level again, we're going to get a little fight with a couple of Dark Elves, not Draugr for once. And once we get past this, we're going to come to the right, and then there's going to be the third legendary chest, which is going to have the second language cipher from Muswellheim. Alright, pretty much nothing eventful happens until we get this boat free. So after getting on the boat, you're going to see a little glowing thing right there in the distance. That is going to be the first Yggdrasil sap. Okay, continuing on with the level, we're going to get another room full of Dark Elves. This is going to happen throughout all of Alfheim. It's pretty much a running trend you're going to have to get used to, just like the Draugr in Midgard. Alright, so there's going to be a cage right here with a legendary chest behind it in the back of the room. So I'm going to open up this cage on the right, kill the Draugr inside of it. Then what we're going to do is we're going to throw the Frost Axe behind this little branch, and then we're going to come in front of it and pull it back. 
And that's going to be legendary chest number four. All right, now moving on to the next part of the level. Once again, another room full of dark elves. And then there's going to be a Nornir chest right next to it. So we're going to come over to this big lever at the back. All right, as you can see, the first rune is right there, just on the edge of that other bridge. Now if we bring it all the way down to the bottom, we can now throw the frost axe at this gear, turn around, and the second one will be up here. Okay, now I'm going to go back up, because in the actual run-through, I grabbed this piece of armor in this red chest. Okay, but going back down to the gear now, we're going to lower the middle section only, freeze the gear, and then we're going to jump down, and the third rune is right here. So by calling back the frost axe, we can now open up this Nornir chest, which is going to contain another Eden apple. Alright, continuing on, we're going to meet this again. Another room full of Dark Elves. And once we're done fighting them all off, just there, that little pile of rocks, is going to be our ancient fight. Alright, the only way to kill these guys is to throw the Frost Axe at the little part in the centre. Like this, as you see, it's the only thing that does damage. Now, don't stand in the middle of its beam like I do. Come over here behind this rock, and... As you see, it completely nerfs all damage that you take from it. Now just wait until it opens it up. It cannot hit you from behind this rock. Unless it gets a bit too close and does the shockwave attack. Alright, so after we've done this little finishing move, we'll rip out its heart, and a couple more Dark Elves will appear. I'm going to speed through this process because it's really hard to edit it out seamlessly. Alright, there's the Ancient Heart that we're going to need for a trophy later on in the game. And here is the fifth legendary chest of the level, which is going to contain Njord's Tempest, which we are going to need for some of the Valkyries. Okay, so after chopping down this alpine branch, we're going to come over here to the left, and there's going to be a collectible on this corpse on the floor. Alright, the next story relevant part is this big door where the Light Elves are held behind. So if we come down to the left, we're going to see a door that's held shut by some alpine branches. Just throw the Frost Axe through them to get rid of them and the door will open slightly. Now there's three runes, which are going to be bells that you ring. So one's here, second one's up here, and third one is just at the back, right behind the chest. You've got to do these things pretty quickly, otherwise the chest will close. Inside of here is going to be another horn, and now we're actually going to get a rage increase. So coming to the other side of the stairs, we're going to meet another cindery shop. So once we get inside of here, we are going to purchase the best talisman of the game, which is Eternal Fury. Once this levels up, it's going to allow us to basically have infinite rage, which is the most broken aspect of this whole game. Okay, we have the cindery shop. Just here on the right is going to be the second Yotnar Shrine, which allows us to tick it off the list for this video. And then pretty much nothing is going to happen or at least nothing trophy relevant is going to happen in Alfheim until we get past the light of Alfheim. Now this part here, I'm just showing you it for context because we are still nowhere near the end of it. So I'm going to skip over that as well, because there's a giant conga line of Dark Elves you have to fight to get here. And here's going to be the sixth legendary chest of the level. Alright, just behind us, we are going to break open this barrier, put the crystal inside of here, shoot it with a light arrow, and here is going to be the second lore marker of the level. Alright, so after Atreus has done reading this lore marker, we're going to take out the crystal, we're going to take it up these stairs and stick it in this crystal holder on the left. Shoot it with a light arrow. Now come up on this ledge, it's going to be a Nornir chest. Now right there at the back over the stairs is going to be one of them. Behind the chest is the second, and the third one's just behind us as we get up here. Inside this Nornir chest, which is going to be number four on our list, is going to be another Eden Apple. Then, after freeing all the Light Elves, we are going to get the story-relevant trophy, Feels Like Home. Now, moving back to the main area, we'll see that it starts getting darker. We're going to get to the second difficult battle guide of this video, which is going to be two Revenants. I've added this because I know people have trouble with Revenants, 
Basically, just get them as close to the edge as possible, then stun them with an arrow, and then just fly them over the edge with Spartan Rage. Like so. Alright, now we're going to come down to the button. So we're going to shoot this crystal. Alright, now we're going to stun all these guys. We're going to freeze them with a Valdry's Anvil, and then just chop them all up one by one. Now we're going to grab the third collectible, which is just behind us. Then we're going to take the crystal from the middle of the room and bring it right down to the bottom. Now this is an optional section, so after taking care of this Draugr, which could take a little longer than I thought it would. Now the thing is, I actually do fail this one the first time, so I'm actually going to fail this one on purpose just to, you know, just to get it to reset. Okay, now here's what you actually do. Hit the inside once. Now this one you hit twice. And this is the last one, hit it once. And this will open. It's only a red chest, you don't really need to come back here. It's just got the final piece of that armor set for this level. Okay, now we take the crystal, and we're gonna go and put it in this crystal holder just here on the right, just under this bridge. And when we shoot it, it's going to open a little light bridge that allows us to get back to that Nornir chest that we opened before. So we're actually going to use the gear and get down underneath the bridge again. Except this time, we're going to come over here to the middle section, where we're going to get the fourth collectible of the level. Now we're going to come right back out. Go back across that light bridge. Right back into the area we just came from. And just here on the left is going to be the fifth collectible. And if you want it, there's also a hack silver chest just over here in the corner. But I'm just going to skip to the boss fight. Now, here's the method to defeat this boss. It may be hard the first couple of times you try it, especially on Give Me God of War mode, which I'm playing on at the moment. But there is a way to cheese this fight. So one, bait out this charge attack, and then just chop it. And you can spam the chop, because usually he will just spam three moves in a row. If he does so, you can just chop straight through it. There you go, he does the charge again, we chop straight through it. Now we're just going to avoid these little grenades. Now he's going to charge at us again, so we're going to chop him out of it. And all the while, just keep spamming square with Atreus, because it slowly whittles down his health. These light arrows do the most amount of damage to this boss, like, out of anything you can do. Alright, he's charging, so chop him again. Avoid the grenades. Avoid the grenades. Alright, so we're going to block this one. Right, Spartan Rage out of this because he almost like took out all of our health. Alright, now, because his moves are largely unpredictable now, we're just going to try and bait out his charge attacks. Alright, so there's a charge attack, we're going to chop him out of that. And, just, once again, he's just cycling through all of his moves. He does them multiple times in a row, just to waste our time. Alright, there's a charge, we're going to chop him out of that. And again, he's going back to his grenade cycle. Alright, now he's doing his final move, which is the flying plunge attack. Alright, so we baited out a charge there, we're going to hit him again. Now we're going to unload some runics to get a bit of extra damage in. Now dodge, 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 and try to go for the chop if you can. Alright, so we're going to have to tank that damage. Dodge, 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 and recover some rage with the talisman. Dodge, dodge, dodge. Now all we can really do is just wait for an opening, and he doesn't really leave many openings later on in the fight. Alright, now he's going to spam that again, except this time he's going to hit us. So we're just going to use our Resurrection Stone to heal from that. It's not a big deal. However, he also took himself out at the same time somehow, so we're just going to finish him off. He's going to drop the Wolf Runic, which is going to be a useful item for Atreus, for... Well, most of the game, until we get the boar stampede. Okay, so after we get outside, there are only two places left to go. If we come over to this beach on the left, we'll have an entire room full of Draugr and Tatsil Worms, again. 
Except this time after we kill them, we're going to go through this gate, kill some more tassel worms, just two of them, try to freeze them and then go for the axe cleave, which kills them one hit. And right here at the back is going to be another Nornir chest. Just hit these three specific bells that I'm hitting on screen right now, and it will open. And this is the last Nornir chest of the level. Alright, now here's how you open this. Activate the gear, and then hit the vines as quickly as possible. Then, once they're gone, you open it up again, and then quickly run through. And once we get through here, we're going to meet the first realm tear. And all that's going to come out of it is two of these brutes. Now, try and lure him towards the edge, and then just throw him over the side with Spartan Rage. You can do this for both of them. And this is a cheap way to win. Alright, now we've got the Dust of Realms. We're going to come over this side, take out these vines, take out these vines, and then just here on the right is going to be the sixth collectible of the level. Alright, so after we jump down, there's going to be a door right there on the right, you can see. And just on the other side of it is going to be a legendary chest that's covered in Alfheim vines. Alright, so we're just going to turn this gear all the way to the end, and then we're going to try and line up all three Alpine Vines with the Frost Axe throw, because we have to hit them all at the same time. Alright, as you see there, we missed one, so I'm just going to reset that. Alright, line it up. And there you go, all three at once. Now inside of here is going to be another Talisman, which I'm never going to use, but... You guys may want to use it. There's going to be another Draugr in here, which you don't have to kill. You can just run past it. Now, we're going to get to the second beach. It's going to be more Draugr and more Tassel Worms, which we're just going to skip over because you've seen it like 50 billion times already. Alright, now here's how you get this, uh, this little hack silver chest. You don't need it for the trophy, but it might be a little annoying to people who want it. So you have to throw the axe and then draw it back to you. Alright, now jumping up this ledge is going to be the last legendary chest of the level. And then, after we jump down this cliff, right to our right here, after we've dropped this, right here is going to be the last collectible of the level as well. Alright, now there's one more thing to do. So after we've cleared out these nightmares from this level right here, and these tassel worms, which are really starting to annoy me at this point. Yep, there you go, all done. So over here is going to be the only raven of the level, just here on this ledge. And then, these three crystals on the floor, just hit them with the light arrows, and they will open up a realm tear. So activate the realm tear, and there's going to be three speed draugas that come out. They're not massively difficult to beat. You could just beat them by spamming the axe chop, as I'm doing on screen right now. They are not fast enough to react to this, even though they are the speed draugas. Yeah, this is embarrassing. Alright, now there's only one more. So, I'm just going to come over here just for safety. Now, my intention was to lure him out and then just hit him from a distance with the frost axe. But it's actually easier just to get in closer. Just like the Brute Draugus, you can't really respond to it. You can just continue spamming him with arrows and the axe throw at the same time. And as you see, he's completely stunlocked. There's pretty much nothing he can do. Alright, now that we've taken him out, the last thing to do is just to collect the Realm Tear and close it. And now, we're going to leave Alpine and go right back up the mountain in Midgard. I'm just collecting these last few collectibles before we go. Alright, there we go. Okay, as you see on screen right now, I'm opening up another realm tier just in this first tower. Now, I actually fail at it, which is why I don't add it to the counter. But, if you want it, and then you think you can do it, it's right there. Okay, so now that this little crystal has dropped, I'm gonna pick it up, put it over here next to this lore marker, Shoot it with a light arrow, and that will be the last lore marker of the level. 
Thanks for watching the video, guys. Like, comment, subscribe, ring the notification bell, and share this video with your friends. Doing any of these things will help my channel to grow and will help me be recognized by the YouTube algorithm. Also, stay tuned for episode 4, which will be airing in a couple of days. Now, I'm just going to show you guys the stat screen.